given useful knowledge is you know the one key takeaway you that's, right. uh, that's critical here the rise of artificial intelligence we started mm-hmm. talking about that uh, a little while ago seems yeah. to on the surface right now be uh, heralding a complete uh, you know revolution in the access to knowledge right? absolutely the access to data the access to information and the ability to like build on it uh if the gutenberg press leads to mm-hmm. you know in some way shape or form to the you know the renaissance and this um uh, piece that you talked about in europe to me artificial intelligence and these large language models and this ability to like do machine learning and data analytics where the technology is learning how to become better on its own much like you were saying right Techn- technology is like cells reinforcing to me it sounds like we are on the throes of a massive revolution economically at least but i wanted to get your sense that like you've studied the industrial revolution you've studied history is this hype you feel generated by certain silicon valley companies him or no. do you think there's more to it and if it is like what's your sense of what it will mean for us in the next 5 years well i think we have already experienced a large chunk of the information revolution and we've gotten so used to it that we don't even realize how different things are from how they used to be i think there has been a vast vast democratization of access to information and to knowledge absolutely could and 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 and, and the constraint is right now it's not access it is sorting the weeds from the chaff because we got information is being so accessible there are endless opportunities for people to basically uh, uh sell you you know to try to put things in the public domain that are you know fake in one form or another and so uh it, it, one of the things that 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 needs to be done much better is essentially putting markers of quality and believability on the stuff that the system coughs up so you know like everybody else i've been playing with chat gpt <laughs> and who, who could not but you but in some sense what people don't realize is that the fact that chat gpt is available to everybody you know it's available just as well to me as to as to warren buffett you know you don't have to be rich to access uh uh chat gpt or to access you know facebook That's or right. wikipedia or you know a zillion things that are available it's completely democratic i mean anybody can access it and people do and so that in and of itself i think is already a, a major step forward you know that we that this is not confined to the elite but it's available to everybody now what artificial intelligence is going to do i think it is going to and this is bad for guys like me it's going to devalue human capital because people without much education can now do things that you only before that you could only did do if you had a phd or at least <laughs> you know a higher degree and so now how you, know, you can people people can them basically you know uh, appear as if they can write articles that are scientific and serious uh just by going to uh chat yes, gpt and say write me an article about you know uh, the constant uh, in the system of substitution production function uh, you know in the production of barley and you know it will do it now before that there may be 10 people in the whole world who could do it now anybody can do it but that is you know a reduction of inequality so i actually what i mean i worry about certain aspects of of artificial intelligence but i actually think that much like the internet and much like the smartphone it's a, it's a huge equalizer it's a huge equalizer and and certainly the smartphone has done fabulous things um, in places that before that just couldn't dream about i mean the smartphone has revolutionized africa people don't understand how Fair. deeply african uh, uh, economies depend on on smartphones much more so than in the west for instance you know uh, yeah. um 
completely depends on it. The same must be true in, in India. I haven't been there a long time, but but I imagine oh, everybody will, in you India. Will, you will be. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, basically it's so cheap that it's available to everybody. And so yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sort of in favor of that. I think that actually will change society. I mean, I can't quite envisage what it will, what the end game will look like. But in, in some sense, this is a positive development, just as I think that the whole digitalization, uh, which we've been going through since the 1950s, basically, has been a great equalizer. I mean, there was some talk uh, once upon a time about the digital divide, that only people in urban areas had access to the internet. But by now, these things are essentially being solved. There's still a few islands where uh, reception isn't good, but most people have access to it and most people use it. You know, even, you know, people that we think of as being undereducated, undertrained and so on, you know, in, 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 in housing developments in, in urban areas, but they all use smartphones. They all use how to access information and people have become more sophisticated, more informed about lots of things that before that they were ignorant. And unfortunately, there have been opportunistic entrepreneurs who've been trying to sell them, you know, uh, well, you know, both both political and and other people, you know. But you look at at people who are selling, you know, rubbish, and uh, almost all of them, uh, uh, you know, use this to make money. The the interesting flip side of I, while I completely agree with you about the democratization of information from. The internet, the smartphone to now, let's say, uh, AI tools like ChatGPT. There's a flip side of behind the scenes story there as well, which is that if you look at the companies that are really going to generate wealth mm -hmm. out of artificial intelligence technologies, mm -hmm. they require massive capital expenditure. They require the best research scientists. Mm -hmm. They require yeah. the most access to data, the most access to yeah. cloud computing infrastructure. And that, unfortunately, is not accessible mm. to entrepreneurs that easily around the world, no. right? No. So that yeah. level playing field from a corporate standpoint right now mm. doesn't exist. But from a user standpoint, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I have to make that analogy. It's like the Industrial Revolution <laughs> allows everyone to start wearing clothes because the cost of textiles goes down. But the companies or the countries that make wealth that generate wealth and prosperity out of it, very few, right? I mean, uh, I, think I can give you other I, examples. You're, you're absolutely right. You think about railroads. So yeah. what the railroads did, it, it made cheap transportation available basically to a vast bulk of population. But the railroads companies, you know, were that's large true. and monopolistic. And we that, that that's just how, and the same was true for automobiles, Henry Ford, you think about it. And yet I think, now you are taking me to some different different area of, 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 of discussion, but I still think that under capitalism, you know, barriers to entry are always there, and yet they somehow they're always being uh, you always get new entries. I mean sure Google Google now is vast, you know, I mean I'm I think Microsoft I forget it was Microsoft or Amazon, but they are you know, these are just enormously valuable companies. And yet, there still are new entries that five years ago we had never heard of. And now they're there. Think of TikTok. I mean, who'd, I, I, you know, who'd ever heard of TikTok five years ago? Now they are vast. So, you know, uh, so, or, or, you know, the company that makes ChatGPT, uh, what is it? Uh, OpenAI. Open AI. Open right. AI. So open AI, I mean, they, they, three years ago, nobody had heard of them. So, I mean, there is entry and, you know, the, sure, these companies are big, but General Motors was big once, you know, Kodak was big once. Uh, That's uh, right. Capitalism, in that sense, as it always, it creates, it exploits the economy to scale, but the, the barriers to entry are never in Super Permanent. Bowl. If, yeah, you have, to, you, know, you have to be a little bit, it's not going to happen from today yeah, to tomorrow. And and you know, and ninety nine percent of the of the companies that try will fail, and yes. only one of them will become Microsoft. <laughs>